Did you know that 30% of motor vehicle collisions that lead to a fatality are rear end collisions? How can we get that number to decrease? And what impact could an adjustment in technology on trailers have on reducing that number? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. And I am looking forward to having our guests talk about their technology and how that might save lives. So Bill Morgan is the VP of Sales at IntelliStop. Bill, welcome to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. So glad to have you here. Jamie, thanks for having me. So a little bit of a somber note that we start this episode on that uh, when there are fatalities, 30% of them are rear end collisions. that's That's a big number. That's a lot of people's lives lost. And you've really, uh, in your company, uh, are, are fighting the good fight to try to, to change that. So first of all, just for people who maybe aren't familiar with your company and what you do, what is IntelliStop and how does it work? Great question, Jamie. Um, IntelliStop is a module that turns brake and marker lights into multifunction. So what multifunction means is we're going to take and we pulse the existing brake and marker lights on the trailer four times. So they're going to, it makes them dual function at that point and getting the trailing driver's attention. I remember when I was selling, um, heavy duty parts and, uh, I remember back when the led lights came out, there were a lot of studies about the difference between the incandescent lights and how quickly from the moment the person hits the brake pedal to the light illuminating and how these leds were so much faster. And that definitely was part of helping to save lives, but it hasn't been enough to really eliminate this problem. So the technology that you're putting in is now kind of stacking on top of that. Do I have that right? Yeah, absolutely right. We just wanted it to, we wanted to make it simple. We wanted to make it simple for the people that are maintaining the vehicles, installing the equipment, but also too, for the safety guys that are concerned about these numbers. Uh, It all affects their CSA scores. It can, it can really make an impact on your fleet. It's just a, such a simple way for them to come and make an impact. Yeah. So let's talk about um, the actual investment and and the time to install. So what exactly is being installed? How long does it take? Can a tech do it on his own? Do they need kind of, you know special tools? Like, give us some insight into the into the way that your product is used. So with our product, uh, we implemented the KISS method. You familiar with the KISS method? Keep it simple. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We wanted we wanted to keep it simple. Because safety, I've seen this time and time again. Safety will be like, hey, this is great technology. We want to utilize it. Um, you know, we can really save a lot of money. And then it gets in the hands of maintenance. And they're like, wait a minute, hold on. Three hours to install this? Uh, yeah, this is not cost effective. So with our product, it installs in less than five minutes. What we do is it goes in the seven-way nose box on the trailer. Okay, it basically goes in line with the, uh, with the brake light wires coming off the back of the seven-way going to the lights. And again, less than five minutes, we're utilizing existing brake and marker lights. And because we're pulsing, we maintain the burn on the existing brake lamps as well. Okay. So the lights that are, are installed on these trailers are, weren't originally designed to do the pulse thing. Is there any issues that, that happen with maintenance? Um, first of all, on the actual technology you're putting in the nose box. And second of all, does is there any downstream issues that that are caused that that someone would have to be worried about? Uh, no different than basically a driver tapping his brake. So you're going to see the same, you know, wear times as, you know, you would with normal brake light up operations. I, I don't see any issues there. So when it comes to maintenance intervals, we have zero maintenance intervals on our product, okay? Our product is conformal coded. It's a module. That's all it is. It's dipped. It's built right in the United States. On top of the conformal coating and being dipped, it is also installed in the seven-way nose box because we know that the trailers are exposed to harsh conditions on the road. So it's an additional protection to this. But once it's installed, there's no additional maintenance um, to this. And when it comes to the, you know, the five minutes or less, you know, Jamie, we're also seeing nose boxes where those bolts get corroded. You know, those older trailers might take a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Okay, we're going to talk more about this after our break. We'll be right back. Don't have a heavy-duty part number and need to look up a part? Go to parts.diesellaptops.com or download the app on Apple or Android to create your free account. Looking for high-quality fuel injection for heavy-duty applications? 
Having one supplier for fuel injection allows you to better serve customers by providing them with a complete line, which increases your sales and profitability. Learn more at ambacinternational.com slash aftermarket. We're back from our break, and before the break, we were getting an introduction to the IntelliStop product and what it does, uh, really pulsing those rear taillights and markers to try to make motorists behind the trailer aware that the truck and trailer is stopping. And so just reducing the chance of a fatality from a rear end collision. And as we talked about, 30% of collisions that lead to a fatality are rear end collisions. So this is an important thing that we have to address. I wanted to talk to you about the reality of where we are with using your technology. Now, there are specific trailer applications that can and can't use your technology. Can you just explain that to us a little bit? Great question. Yes. So according to FMCSA, there is an exemption out there for the NTTC. And people that aren't familiar with NTTC, it's the National Tank Truck Carriers. Tankers, uh, they've been running this technology probably the longest. It started with Grindike. Grindike did a study uh, running a amber uh, strobing light on the back of their uh, their trailers. And Grindike seen a 33% reduction in rear end collisions by running an amber strobing light on their trailers when the brakes were applied. That's where this all started. And then NTTC went out and they've applied for an exemption for all the tank truck carriers to allow them to run pulsating brake lamps. And the way that it that it reads, it reads that it needs to be in the upper center or dual outboard position of the trailer to pulse. Well, we have the upper center with the marker lights. We utilize the marker lights and the dual outboard is going to be your turn signals. So, and your brake lamps as well. So that we, we can legally operate our product on the uh, NTTC, under the NTTC exemption. Now, when it comes to a drive in or reefer, flatbed, they, it has not been approved to, to run on that yet. Okay. So that, that's a fight that, that right now the trucking industry is pushing for to try to save lives and, and make that uh, available to all of the applications. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, we have uh, we have a bunch bunch of uh, fleets that are in our corner on this, but I think the biggest thing that uh, that we're fighting is really the the studies and the data that they've like already generated. And NHTSA did a study back in 2010, and I'd love to. I actually have it. I'd love to share it with you to look at it because it's a great study. And I I have some FMCSA uh, FMCSA statistics as well showing you know rear end collisions with uh from passenger vehicles rear ending large trucks and large trucks rear ending passenger vehicles showing the fatalities showing the injuries the breakdowns and the technology i mean we, we put a lot of thought into it when it came to this and looking at those studies yeah so what is the thing that's holding us back is it just is it just bureaucracy and red tape is it um uh conflicting data that needs to be resolved because of like statistical anomalies in the data or, or what's, what's the deal there? Honestly, it's bureaucracy, 100%. I mean, NHTSA put out a study in 2010. Yeah, if I, last time I checked, it's 2022. That was 12 years ago. <laughs> I know, it was 12 years ago. Twelve. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, yeah. distracted driving is on the rise. We know this. People grab their phones and they're driving on the road and they're like, they're texting and driving. We know this. We see this every day, Okay. And NHTSA did the study in 2010, and they based it on distracted driving using GPS, messing with the radio, whatever it was, okay? Yeah. Their study, they wanted to see, okay, are existing current regulations showing steady burning, all right? Incandescent, steady burning, even LEDs. When the approaching driver is approaching a, a vehicle and he's distracted and that forward vehicle stopping with a steady burn, no pulse, no flash, no nothing, Okay. 0% increase in reaction time by the trailing driver. That's what the study showed. Then what they did is they looked at pulsing and flashing lights. They looked at, okay, well, we're going to take and we're going to flash all these lights. When the dis- driver is distracted, coming towards that forward vehicle that is stopping. And the numbers were, were pretty drastic. I mean, they've seen a 70% increase in reaction time from the trailing driver. When distracted, when all the lamps are pulsing or flashing. And I'm sitting here going, why is this taking so long for them to pass our exemption? It's common sense. We're not adding any more lights. We're not adding any more cost. 
I mean, proofs in your data. Look at it. I mean, we're just asking to try it, test it. Well, and, you know, obviously the human uh, cost of, of the loss of human life is the most important factor. But secondary to that, but very important to the trucking industry is the cost of collisions, like between nuclear verdicts and, and the cost, just, just even if there's nothing um, in the way of a, of a verdict against you, just being in a collision in itself is very cost uh, prohibitive to fleet. So uh, like, let, let's talk about that a little bit because the, the trucking industry should be very motivated to have this solution regardless of, of the vocation. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, what, last July we had a $1 billion nuclear verdict, $1 billion. It was like 900 million in punitive damages. That, wow. Like, what can we do to reduce that? And our product is a simple, you know, easy install, cost effective solution that can help reduce this. Um, and the thing that I don't think people don't think about is all right, trailer gets rear ended, right? Now it's down. But the other factor is too when a car rear ends that trailer, they're going to take and they're going to rip it apart. They're going to go dig into it. They're going to try to find something wrong with that trailer or tractor. It doesn't matter. That's what people don't realize. Oh, it's just pulsating brake lamps. Okay. Well, I'm seeing a 70% increase in trailing driver's reaction time when distracted. Our product can help with this. We're seeing a 33% rear end reduction from the grind egg studies on amber. When amber can go two ways, it can be stop or go. Where ours is red, we're using the existing brake lamps. This can really benefit the fleets. Hey, I got a trailer that's down. What's the cost on that trailer being down? You know, now you got to wait and they got a supply chain issue going on today. Yeah. When are you going to get yeah. your parts? How long is that trailer going to be down? You lose a trailer. It's like, that's devastating because it's like, I can't get a new trailer, so I can't even replace it. So once it's gone, it's gone. Absolutely right. You know, I mean, and these guys, our goal was to see trailers when I was maintaining a uh, runner shop as a fleet maintenance, fleet maintenance manager. Our goal was we wanted to see the trailers within 90 days, right? Try to try to touch them every 90 days. We were lucky. I mean, it was good if we seen them every six months. But in real in reality, we were only seeing them maybe once a year for those annuals. And the work that needed to be done, it was it was insane. You know, but to take it a step further, look at we have this push for autonomous vehicles too coming, right? That's great. The truck's gonna drive itself. Well, guess what, Jamie? We still have a trailer that's connected to that truck. That's how it works. And if you look at some of the studies that NHTSA has put out, along with um, some of the other publications you've probably seen, anytime there's an accident with an autonomous vehicle, it's someone rear-ending that autonomous vehicle. Yeah. So our product works with that too. It goes hand in hand. So I have a Subaru. And when you're approaching that, that Ford vehicle and you're coming in too fast, right? What will happen is they have what's called a heads up display. So it reflects off the windshield. It will start flashing red on the windshield, right in your face. Volvo has this on their, uh, their new VNRs as well. Their heads up display, they call it. And that's exactly what it'll do. It's getting the driver's attention. It's a driver assistance system. It is not there to replace the drivers yet today. So we're just doing this. I guess you can look at it this way and say, IntelliStop is a more cost-effective solution to add to the collision mitigation braking systems. Not everyone can afford collision mitigation braking on their on their cars. We can't even get cars right now. You, 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 I don't know what it's like in Canada, but down here in the States, used cars are there, but good luck finding a new one. Well, and, and to me, the, the logic of your technology is the same as those heads-up displays. It's just, it's the same logic. It's like, get people's attention, right? In the fastest, most efficient way possible. The other thing that most people don't think about, and actually I met with a, a large national fleet, and the thing that they really liked about our product the most was that we pulse the upper marker light on the trailer. So with that, put yourself on a six lane interstate, okay? And traffic is backing up. And we've all been there where you're, say you're in a, a small SUV or even a car, and you have a pickup truck in front of you or a box truck. Well, I can't see if anyone's braking in front of me. Where us, you can see the marker lights. I mean, no matter how many vehicles are behind them, I can see that, hey, that that semi that's up there is slowing down. That's a good point because also of weather. So if it was just the lights down low, even just like heavy rain or snow and sleet could uh, reduce the amount of visibility of those pulsing lights. But because it's up high, 
and down low, you're going to, you're going to see it. I mean, there's no way around that. You're going to see it. Absolutely. Right. You know, um, <laughs> watched this movie recently called the kid on Disney and his, it was, he met an eight year old version of himself. Right. And the eight year old asked him, he goes, Hey, why is the moon orange? And I'm like, it's a good question. Like sometimes it's orange when it comes up. The reason why is actually the blue light. It, it mm-hmm. like it, it's going to scatter is what happens when that's coming through. But the red light actually makes it through. Red the, has the longest wavelength that's out there. So if you're ever driving in rainstorms, what happens if it starts pouring really hard? First people to put on their hazards is the truck driver. That's <laughs> like they want to be seen. They want to be noticed. Same thing. So when we're traveling in fog, whether we're traveling in rain, when we're braking, that the pulsing is going to make sure that those the wavelength of the light makes it through. So if there is someone out there who's like running tankers and they want to do this, um, what's their process? How do they get your product? Is it something they, they buy through a distributor or do they buy it direct or how does that work? So currently today, they're going to they're gonna buy it direct from us. Uh, okay. We have distributors that are, that are going to be coming on shortly um, lined up. We're just waiting for that exemption to go through. Once that exemption goes through, uh, then we can take and bring these distributors on. We don't want to bring them on until we have that exemption. You've been listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm your host, Jamie Irvin. We've been speaking with Bill Morgan, the VP of Sales at Intellistop. To learn more and to buy the product, uh, you can go to their website, intellistopusa.com. We'll make sure that the links are in the show notes. Bill, thank you so much for being on the Heavy Duty Parts Report. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you for watching this video. Click here to subscribe to the Heavy Duty Parts Report YouTube channel and click here to watch another great episode.